Let's talk about the value of being imperfect. As humans, we're not perfect. Natural systems are not perfect, but they do work in a certain way that if you understand the nature of a thing, you can benefit from that nature. I'm Justin Hitt from Prosperity Homestead. What I'm doing here is I'm clearing the vegetative strips that are located on the slopes of these earthwork terraces. As you know, in our earthworks programs, we build out these terraces in order to expand our growing space and to give us other resources stacked in function of the actual space that we're growing. So we're getting uh, more crop space, but we're also getting more biomass and more, uh, as you'll see, uh, pollination for bees and such. So we'll start with the bees since they've caught my attention. Uh, we have a number of bees, and this is uh, hairy vetch. In other beds, there are flat wildflowers. You can see the wildflowers up there. Now it is currently June, it's super hot out here. And the bees are still pollinating. Now bees will fly a mile and a half to get, to get um, pollen. So they've got clover in here. They've got hairy vetch. And there were mustard greens over there. You can see a little bit left of it. But what we've got here is these vegetative strips in between a market garden space. So the level terrace is the, is the garden space. And when I say about imperfect, like for example, this bed here didn't get a good solid cover crop on it yet by focusing our efforts into mulched uh, narrow beds, we're able to get the plants that we need in place. And then they use the shallow tillage to determine what crops were, were left. The biomass that's around the plants here, those are peppers in front of me here, and then we've got some watermelon down there and some onions. The, the biomass was actually grown locally, grown on site. Now you can get straw, some of this has got straw around it, but these earthworks become a source for a large amount of biomass. So I've used a comma, you can use a scythe or, or just a straight blade, and I've cut down all the biomass on the hill here and I left it in the path so you can see how much biomass is there. Now, when we're talking about the imperfect, you can see a lot of these have gone to seed. So we're in June and we've got grass that's gone to seed. We've got uh, various plants that have gone to seed. And you might say, well, Justin, I could just hit this with a string trimmer and cut it down really quick, chop it all into little pieces and then mulch. And I would say, yeah, you could do that, but it wouldn't be as valuable as the imperfect method of chopping it with a, a blade. See, the blade doesn't smash the plant all up. It cuts it off nice and neat. So I cut it with a blade. Notice the blade will not cut this small grass. So there's a lot of grass underneath. That blade is cutting the grass rather than slapping it or smashing it like the string trimmer does. Now, again, if you had a, a sharp blade on the string trimmer, you can cut this above the surface and get a similar effect. The key is, is that the slapping motion of the comma is knocking off most of the seed. So you can see the seed is falling there. And because I'm not raking off this hill, there is still biomass left behind on the hill. So I'm getting the, the majority of it. I'm getting the hairy vetch and I'm getting the, the straw and, and the hay and stuff. And I'm gonna bring that out here and just throw it on the ground, okay? Now I'm gonna spread it out wide. I'm not gonna mulch it that thick around the beds because the tomatoes are still young and when, when the tomatoes get bigger we can do that but because we've cut these vegetative strips or these hills we've cut them with a blade all this will grow back so this grass will grow back see it didn't there's still grass there it just got knocked over all that grass will grow back now it'll tend to favor the things that grow back in this season so it'll be grasses and, and stuff like that. The hairy vetch shouldn't come back that much. Um, some of the other weeds and stuff that are in there won't come back that much. But again, it's the imperfect cut that is giving us the biomass and the opportunity for it to grow back. And we want it to grow back. Also, you might notice that there's like different levels of terrace here. Um, this isn't slumping. This is just where it was not cut. Um, we follow the con the the curves we just didn't mound as much dirt back up there well come at the end of the season towards the rainy season we'll start shaving that soil out and throw it back up on the hill and throw it back up on the top as we're doing our maintenance we'll smooth all that out but with it being imperfect when it rains there's areas where water will settle 
those seeds will germinate and then we'll get the grasses, the grains, the cover crops and everything growing on our spaces. Now being imperfect, we can more carefully cut around our more valuable plants such as the sunflower. So you can see I was able to cut around the sunflowers. It isn't all or nothing when it comes to what maybe a string trimmer would be. And I'm able to leave behind a large amount of biomass, which I've simply just uh, cut and dropped down at the bottom here. Because the hill is all uneven and there's different cuts, different plants will come back stronger than others. And of course, all the grass that was underneath the biomass will come back. Hairy vetch has a tendency to just choke out everything. Uh, we don't want to choke out everything. We want grasses on these hills. The deep rooted grasses. And you see the butterflies going through here. But here's what we end up with. We end up with a nice cleaned up hill. The biomass is down here in the bottom. It's just going to uh, prevent evaporation of water from this ditch. And it comes out super nice. Now there's still, you know, there's still a little bit of grass here. Some grass just got knocked over. But again, like I said, with the blade, the thin grass doesn't get cut. It just gets knocked over and then it comes back. It protects the soil. It protects our investment. I can see areas where we can shave later and, and uh, clean up this slope of the hill. But again, I could carefully cut around the plantain rather than hitting it with the string trimmer. I haven't used any, any petrol. It didn't really take that much time. I can leave behind the sunflowers. The rough edge, the rough edge. Now over time, this will perfect. Now you'll see, cause you'll see there's a mound at the bottom here. There's a mound right here. Uh, that can get shoveled up the hill here as we build out the earthworks. The key is, is that we have a bund at the top that we are not allowing water to run over and that the hill has some kind of vegetation on it consistently. And you can see there's grains over there and that we slight chop and drop it periodically, ideally before it goes to seed, but in the summer you're going to drop seed. And so you want to be able to knock that stuff down. I could have gone through here with a stick and just knock the seed off of all the, the plant. Because again, there's, there's like multiple types of grasses in here. The success is multiple types of grasses. I could have just knocked the seed off and then come back, come back through and, and cut it. Uh, but overall, again, it doesn't have to be perfect. It just needs to be done. These materials will be brought down and used as mulch. And if some of it seeds down here, that's okay. Because again, we're just going to keep mulching and build up that biomass and build up that surface coverage to ultimately give us our, our nutrients. And you can see again, more bees. And then a lot of the stuff's being let to go to seed. So we have seed for next year. So again, if, you, if your garden is overgrown with grass, if your garden has areas where maybe it goes a little wild, you can see all that, it's a little wild. That's okay, it's part of the, the cycle. We're gonna get the biomass out. We're gonna leave behind the, some small flowers. We're gonna have habitat for bees and birds. We do this cutting after the ground nesting birds. This is the same model as that I have on the hills at my property, except these hills are only like three or four feet tall and they form a vegetative strip on the slopes of a earthworks terrace. The earthworks terrace has uh, market gardens on it and it's something you can learn here at and I'm actually at the Sustainable Homestead Institute so when you contact my my website I'll forward you if you're interested in a an earthworks class actually off in the distance they're working on a natural building but again, you can visit www.prosperityhomestead.org. Go to the contact page and ask your questions. Ask your questions in the comments. Learn how this works. This is not hard work, but it creates quite an abundance. All of this straw, all of this material, all of this uh, pollen for the bees. In fact, vegetables grow in here sometimes. All of this growth. It's something you can learn how to do. It's gonna give you greater security. It's gonna provide for you more abundance and it's going to be something you can be proud of. It's gonna feed that soil and every year get better and better. Again, I'm Justin Hitt with Prosperity Homestead doing another demonstration of 
some of the methodologies that are used here at the Sustainable Homestead Institute. You'll find links in the comments below or links in the description. Uh, I'm looking forward to hearing from you.